Hello and welcome guys, my name is Steve and this is go for 2 So if you're new to this channel, this channel is about Go programming language, so consider subscribing if you aren't already. So this video is going to be a little bit different because we're not just going to teach things from the beginning until the end just like I do in other tutorials. This is going to be a video series which means the next video is going to be based on the last one and you have to watch all of them in order to make sure you understand what's happening. So in this video series we're going to be building an application from scratch which means that we're going to write everything ourselves, we're not going to use any third party packages or anything like that. We're also going to learn new concepts, concepts which I haven't taught in previous tutorials and we're also going to do live coding which means we're not going to copy paste things around, we're just going to write everything from scratch. Scratch. We're gonna write everything ourselves. So with that being said, let me go ahead and show you where exactly is the repository of the application which by the end of this series we will be building. So if you open up your browser you should be able to type in github.com slash gophertooths slash reminders CLI. So notice here this is not GoBasics, this is a new repository where I hosted the entire application. So in this repository you can find everything which we will be building by the end of this series so make sure to check out this readme. I provided a lot of information including a demo and pretty much everything is here so make sure you clone this make sure you play around now that i showed you how exactly the final application looks like let's go ahead and talk about where exactly we will be building during this video series so you may ask yourself what are the technologies which we will be using in this video series well it's simple we're going to be using go as usual so pretty much 90 percent of the code is going to be go and we're also going to be using node.js for the operating system notification so speaking of components we're going to have the cli app itself which is going to take in the cli input process it and send it over and that data is going to be sent over to a backend API or to an HTTP API which is basically going to process those records and pretty much all the logic is going to lie in the server or the backend API. The backend API will have under its control two workers so basically we're going to have a saver worker which is going to save records once in a while to the disk and we're also going to have a notifier worker which is going to take uncompleted records and it's going to send them to the notifier service. Then we have the notifier service which is nothing else but the service which sends us an OS notification so that we can mark it as completed or delayed for a certain period of time. So speaking of the database, we're not going to use anything fancy like MySQL or something like that. We're going to be using a file database. So basically, we're going to store everything in a file. We're going to store everything in a file called db.json. And we're also going to have a config for that database because we need some metadata for that database in order to work properly. So speaking of the CLI application is nothing else but a client which can create, edit, fetch and delete reminders. So as the CLI client, we're basically going to take that input from the CLI. We're going to validate it and send it over to the backend API. So speaking of the backend API, it's nothing else but an HTTP server, as I said before. So basically, we're going to have endpoints for creating, editing, fetching, and deleting reminders. So we're going to take all that data coming in from the CLI client, we're going to process it, validate it, and basically create, edit, delete, and fetch reminders. We're also going to have another endpoint for health, which is basically going to tell the CLI client if our backend API is up and running or not. Speaking of the notifier service, this is the Node.js application. So basically, we're going to have a small HTTP server with two endpoints. We're also going to have the health endpoint which is going to tell the backend API if the notifier service is up and running so we can use it or not. And we also have the notify endpoint, which is basically going to take the data coming in from the backend API. It's going to process it and send us an OS notification so we can mark it as completed or delayed for a certain period of time. Now, speaking of the backend API, which the CLI client is going to communicate with, all the records sent from the CLI are going to be stored in memory, which means they will be lost if we cancel the application, if we shut down the application. Now, because of that, the background saver worker is going to basically take all those in-memory records and it's going to save them to disk once in a while. So every once in a while, the background saver worker is going to take the in-memory records and save them to disk so we don't lose them later. Speaking of background workers, we also have the background notify worker, which basically takes the uncompleted reminders and sends them over to the notifier service. Speaking of our database, as I said before, it's nothing fancy we're not using MySQL or MongoDB or anything like that we're just going to be using a file database so we're going to save records to a file called db.json and we're also going to have a config file for the database where we save the configuration which is going to help the database work properly so that's pretty much it on components guys and what we will be building during this video series now let's go ahead and build the bare bones structure for our application so let's jump into the terminal and create a directory for this project so let's cd into go path and source github.com go for toots and i'm gonna make it here so let's go ahead and create this directory and kdir and i'm gonna name it reminders 
dash CLI. So once you created this directory, make sure you open it up with your IDE or text editor and let's start building the application. So in this video, we're just gonna add the bare bones or empty files so we have placeholders or a reference for future videos. So inside our project, let's go ahead and create a directory called client, which is gonna be nothing else but the CLI application. Now inside this client directory, let's go ahead and create a file called switch which is gonna be nothing else but the command switch, which is basically gonna process the command from the CLI and it's gonna figure out which is the command which we wanna run. Now let's go ahead and create a file called http.go, which is gonna be nothing else but the HTTP client, which is gonna communicate with the backend API. Next, let's create a directory called CMD, which is the place where we're gonna store all the binaries. So create directory, CMD, and inside CMD, we're gonna have two other directories. One of them is gonna be client. The other one is gonna be server. So basically you have these two directories inside client, you're gonna have main.go. So this is the one which is gonna generate the binary for the client. And inside the server, you're gonna have also main.go, which is gonna be the entry point for the backend API or for the server. So that's pretty much it on the CMD. So basically this is the place again where we generate the binaries from. Let's also create another directory called notifier. So basically inside notifier, it's gonna leave all the code responsible for the notifier service. So it's gonna have two files. One of them is gonna be notifier.js. And the other one is gonna be package.json, which is nothing else but the package manager for Node.js. So let's make this a valid JSON file and that is pretty much it on the notifier service. Next, let's create a file called makefile, which is basically gonna help us build the application, run several programs and code checking and all that stuff before we build our binaries. So inside reminder CLI, create a file called makefile, capital M. So basically we're gonna store commands here. We're gonna do it in a separate video, but just so we have a placeholder, let's create this file, make file. And let's also create another directory called server, which I left for the end because there are a lot of files here server and inside server let's first of all create the server.go file so basically inside this file we're going to kickstart all the things required by the backend http server so basically this is going to be the entry point for the server or the backend api and we're going to have things like start method or an init method so inside the server directory let's go ahead and create another directory called controllers so basically inside controllers everything related to http server itself is going to be stored here so we're going to have another file called controllers.go which is nothing else but the common functionality for the controllers and for the http server itself and we're also going to have a file called routes.go and we're gonna have the controllers themselves. So let's go ahead and start with the health. So we're gonna have the health controller and we're gonna have the create controller and then we're gonna have the edit controller and we're gonna have the fetch controller and we're gonna have the delete controller. So basically these are all the controllers which are responsible for the HTTP server, which are responsible for serving those endpoints which I've showed you before. Next is create a directory called middleware, which is nothing else but the middle point between the client and our HTTP server. So basically we're gonna use this in order to filter our requests and all that stuff. So I'm gonna explain what a middleware is later on when we use it. So for now, let's go ahead and create this placeholder. So let's go ahead and open up server and inside server create a directory called middle where so inside middleware you will create something called middleware <laughs> which i know sounds crazy but we're going to store the common functionality here which is weird i know but we usually create a file name exactly as the package name in order to store common functionality so basically here we're going to store the function which creates a middleware and then we have a specific middleware called http logger so let's go ahead and create http logger which is nothing else but the middleware responsible for logging every HTTP request coming in from the client. Let's also create another directory inside server called models. I'm gonna explain exactly what models is once we get there. So inside models, let's create a file called reminder.go. So basically everything which is related to a reminder as metadata is gonna be stored in this file. Next, let's create a directory called repositories. So basically inside repositories, we're gonna have the database layer or the database related code. So inside repositories, let's go ahead and create a file called called db.go. So basically inside db.go is gonna be stored all the functionality related directly to the file database, which I said before, we're gonna create ourselves. Next, let's create a file called reminder.go. So basically inside reminder.go is gonna be the code which is gonna interact with that database, which we will create inside db.go. Next, we have services or the layer which the controllers interact with. So let's go ahead and create a directory called services inside server services. So inside services, let's go ahead and create a couple of files. So we're going to have a file called http.go. So basically http.go is going to be the HTTP client, which is going to communicate with the notifier service. And then we have background.go. So basically 
background.go. So inside background.go file, we're gonna have two workers, which I talked about earlier. So basically, here we're gonna store the workers, which are gonna be run in the background. So basically, these are also services, but they will be run in the background. So that's why we need a service like this too. Then let's create another file called reminders.go. So basically, inside reminders.go, it's gonna be the reminder service, which is gonna be basically the service which all the controllers or all the endpoints will interact with. So that is pretty much it on the bare bones and the application structure. So basically, in this video, we just created placeholders or references which we will use throughout this entire video series. Now, all that being said, guys, I'm super excited to build this application. It's gonna be an interesting and a fun application. I promise you that. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button. I'll see you in the next video. Why are you still watching this video? I'll see you in the next video. Get out of here. Go. I'll see you in the next one.